Hello, this is Matt, and we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Last time we looked at everything over on the toolbar here on the left-hand side. This time we're going to look and see what everything is over on the right-hand side. Uh, starting off in the top, uh, we have a top toolbar here that has the chat. Um, that is this whole area that we're in now. You can chat doing a couple of ways. Uh, you can whisper by tapping slash W and who you'd like to whisper to. Um, as you start to type, it'll fill in. You have to go by the name of the players, uh, what they have, not what their character tokens are called. So if you're aiming at, say, the G, uh, if I was aiming at myself, I would have to type in Matt, and then I could say uh, a thing. Um, that whispers only to me, only I can see that. If I wanted to whisper at a player, only they would see it. If they whisper at me, only I would see it. Two players can whisper among themselves, and you would not be able to see that. Another thing you can do is type slash me and then begin to type. Uh, this is me talking and it shows up in a different color, uh, identifying. In my games, we use that to indicate role play. And so if a character is taking an action while other people are talking, such as we're having this meeting and a character decides that they're gonna go to the bathroom or look at other items in the shop or attempt to sneak behind the person, they would type this there. So I, as a GM, know to pay attention to this color. But if they say, um, uh, trying to spell stupid there while I'm talking, so that didn't quite work out. But if they say something like this, I ignore it because that's them talking amongst themselves. So, you know, how many potions do we actually have? Five. Do you have any gold? Stuff like that. Um, and so that kind of stuff should be regulated to the normal chat, and then the slash me is regulated to roleplay. So that's the chat window. Uh, you can scroll back up. Uh, if at any point you want to do more, you can view more of the chat. You can view all chat entries for this game. Next, this is where your images are going to go. So uh, the uh, free assets. Uh, so in the My Library, see you have the eFreeA image in here. Uh, that is the image that I uploaded from the front page. In order for them to upload it, they have to add it to the images. And so my images go here. I can upload new images by using this upload function. Um, go anywhere on your uh, desktop or where you keep your images rather. Um, and so I could go here where I have my images. Oops, it went away. I can go here where I have my images and drag in another image. It'll bring the image in and then I can use it for something. If you are just doing this to be able to play your game for coronavirus, this will probably work pretty well for yourself to just bring some images in, call it a player token, um, and give it some health and call it a day. Uh, but uh, if you want to make custom characters or custom monsters, you'll need to, uh, you don't have to worry about adding the images first. You'll be able to upload them directly to the uh, character sheet, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, or you could add uh, folders. So I could add a folder here uh, for tokens. Um, and then uh, you drag, you can drag and drop. Notice that I'm clicking on where the three lines are, um, not Clicking the name, clicking the name doesn't drag it, drop it. It drags it so I can drag it around, like pull it out. Uh, the token, in order to bring it in, see the plus there indicates that it's minimized. If I open it up, then I can uh, stub it in and put it there. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. You see I have three copies of this, right? Recent uploads, and I have it in the token. Well, the recent uploads is always going to be there. I'm duplicating this over and over. Now, the real question is, is, is this a duplicate or is it the same one? So if I delete one of them, it deleted the single one. So it's not a duplicate. But if I delete the recent uploads, it deletes all of them. And so do not delete it out of the recent uploads or you will lose every location that it's in. I did this recently on my game and lost that particular token. Uh, the subscription sets are things that you're subscribed to. Marketplace purchases are things that you have already purchased and put in. And then inside the free assets are tons of, well, free assets. You can uh, use them however you wish. Uh, this is where, uh, this is the journal tab. The journal tab is where your characters are going to be made. Add creates, you know, you can create characters. Uh, you can create handouts. Uh, and you can create folders. Um, you can move the characters into the folder. You can move the handouts into the folder, but they will naturally be placed underneath the handout and character folder. Um, we'll go more into the character sheet in another video. Uh, the compendium is underneath the eye. This is where you can search for spells such as fireball. 
Uh, you can add that to character sheets or you can just pull it out and, and look at it. When you pull any spell out to look at it, it automatically adds a, it adds it as a handout inside of the journal tab. And so uh, it's there for you to use again. If you delete it, you have not deleted it from the compendium. You can always access it again. This are also things you can drag and drop out. Keep in mind that with the free version, you're only going to get what's in the SRD. That means everything that they give players to start, which is not all the spells. Some you are going to maybe have to add some of your own spells or uh, pay for the player's handbook. Um, if you are just doing this, again, for three weeks so you can get what you need, um, one option would be uh, pay for a pro for a little while and then use the 5e tools, which allow you to import some of the stuff that you already own. Uh, another option would be to simply use everybody's books and then you use Roll20 so that way you can see uh, where people are in relation to each other in distance. But everyone rolls on their own table and they roll in front of themselves. Options. This is how you handle the music. Uh, you can go in and manage audio, uh, look for ambience musics. Um, I want some swamp music, uh, but there aren't any. So maybe there's a swamp track that I can search for. Uh, none in my audio. So I'm under the my audio tab, which is why I didn't find anything. But if I go to tabletop audio, I'm pretty certain they have a swamp. There we go, swamp planet. And, um, and then I can add it to the game. And it comes in here. Clicking that plays it. Uh, clicking the circle arrows puts it in a loop and it constantly plays um, and you actually should be able to hear it at the moment uh, you can turn it up that turns it up for everybody everyone can control in their own master volume however uh, this allows you to fade in or fade out so say I'm done so I want it to fade out and then this button uh, is the link and it'll take you to where this actually is just clicking that stops it uh, you can I can create new playlists, etc. And on a playlist, you can actually set it up to play the entire playlist. So if you had a assortment of sounds, you know, you want frogs croaking, croaking, and a meteor falling, or something like that. This is where your macros go. Uh, you'll have to Google how to use macros. There are much better videos than I could do. So just know that your macros, your decks, rollable tables go in here. Um, the macros, I, I don't use a ton of macros. I use one for a deck of many things. I use one for a beholder. I use one for wild magic. And uh, I use one um, for a custom uh, character I made that was based on a beholder. And then finally is the settings. This is where you can change your name. Um, uh, Let's see, I'm the amazing GM. And once I save this, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, I, my tag has been saved. And also, if I'm trying to whisper to Matt, I can not I can start whispering to Matt, but it knows uh, that uh, there's nobody named Matt. And so A and M show up in amazing, which is why I pulled it up. But if I want to whisper, I have to whisper to the amazing GM, uh, which I sent a blank whisper to. Uh, you can notice that I'm zooming in and out using the scroll. The, the jump in and out is me using the scroll wheel of my mouse on this particular area. Uh, so going back to the setup, there's a lot of stuff in here. You can set, you can check or uncheck. That's up to you. But the one thing I would turn off automatically is down here in the middle. Um, uh, sorry, in the lower half. Uh, I want to broadcast to others. If you're not using Roll20 video or voice, go ahead and turn that off to nothing. And I want to receive from others. If you're not using Roll20 video and voice, turn that to nothing. The reason I use put those to nothing is because they use bandwidth even if they're on. Roll20 is still checking to hear whether or not there should be some audio. And so setting them to nothing tells Roll20 that uh, it shouldn't be looking for that. And it can decrease your overhead just a little bit. Then you have to click reconnect and it will update those things. Um, and uh, outside of that, uh, that's pretty much everything that there is that you need to know uh, to use. Um, ooh, you can change your zoom to scroll to zoom or pan. I did not realize that was a thing. I'm going to have to change that in my games. Uh, the master music volume, I always leave it at 100, and, then it, and all the players in settings can change their own music volume. All right, that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, we are going to go over characters, uh, how to create a character, how to uh, add some tokens to it, um, how to make an NPC, uh, and um, how to have your players make characters. Uh, most of that is basically the same thing, but we're going to go over that in the next video. Uh, thank you for watching, and stay safe.